we go at the top. 12 o'clock position, we have the Red Terran coming from OGS. He is known as... OGS Hypata. Do you know the meaning of his name? Hyperdub? No. Do you? No, I don't. I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm wondering if it has some sort of hidden meaning in Korea. I'm sure there's a meaning behind it. Everyone has a meaning behind it. And down here at the 6 o'clock position, we have our blue Terran hailing from the team. I am a very strong Terran. I am happy! <laughs> so happy right now. He is actually going for a fast refinery once again. <laughs> Worked out well for him last game, he was able to hold off the early aggression coming in from Hyperdub, so it's a good choice, I feel. Yeah, especially in these positions, uh, he doesn't know that they're cross positions quite yet, but when he does scout that, he's going to feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, unless there's some sort of proxy bioplay coming out from Hyperdub, uh, the early refinery is actually a really nice play. Yeah, well, even if it was close to positions, the map is so big, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. You still have to travel a fair way. Yep. Uh, a lot longer than any other map. But yet again, we see here with Hyperdub walling off at the top of his ramp. But in addition to walling off, he's actually getting zero refineries. So Happy got the early refinery, Hyperdub gets none. Uh, that in indicates that Hyperdub is going to be going for a fast command center. Uh, if, oh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> he is actually throwing down a refinery right now. It's a little later than you normally expect. I don't know exactly what he's going to be going for with that. But it does give him a lot more minerals to be able to get more marines. Get a, a slightly early command center, not a super fast like we've seen in other games. But, uh... Depends on what he scouts here right now. Yeah, I, I think Hyperdub feels a lot safer being the aggressor rather yep. than defending everything. Uh, the, the fast expanse style tends to favor the guys who sit back, like to defend the early aggression, and then take, get an advantage that way. Whereas we see the complete opposite here from Hyperdub. He likes putting pressure and likes making the game play out his way. We'll see how that works for him this time. We do have that factory almost completed now for Happy. Getting his second gas as well, so we might be seeing some more cloak banshees yet again. They did work out superbly for him in game one. Yeah, uh, he is getting the second gas at the normal timing. Uh, it's a little interesting though because when you get the early r first refinery, mm -hmm. uh, unless you want to go for something like Blue Flame Hellions uh, drops or Banshee and Cloak, uh, you will sometimes delay your second refinery a little bit. So you get that faster factory out, but you still end up having the exact same gas later on. Do so that SCV being taken out by Happy's Marines down at the front. But first game we didn't see any scouting from them, so I've up changing it up a little bit this game. There's that command center. It is just Command Center and a factory, so yeah. uh, getting that slightly later refinery delays his factory a little bit, gets a few more Marines out there, but it, as I was saying before, it does get the minerals that you need to get up a Command Center a little bit faster than your opponent. Uh, if you can hold it, which he should be able to with his extra Marine count and the factory out early, then uh, it can give you that economic lead that gives you the advantage going into the mid-game. You do have that star pop being moved over to the Tech Lab now. And straight into a Banshee yet again. This is actually going to work out very well as the size of the map is not going to be very easy for Hyperdub to actually do a counter-attack if he does lose a lot of units. He's also got Coke on the way yet again, so he's going to play into his strength from game one. Yep, and this is actually going to work very, very well against Hyperdub. When you do have that early expansion, you have to defend two different locations at the same time. In fact, you actually have to defend three because you have those tech buildings that you need to defend. Yep. Uh, but having that Coke is really going to help him keep Hyperdub's army split around uh, depending on what's being defended. Oh, and a huge mistake here from Hyperdub. He actually built that command center within vision of those Hellions peeking up that ramp. So Happy knows exactly what Hyperdub is going to be doing and knows exactly how to counter it right now. Yeah, he's just sitting down at the bottom of the ramp here being threatening. Also keep those Marines down there as we try to, I'm trying to find where this Banshee is. There it is. It's only just come out of the starport. But it comes down to Hyperdub does have... Oh, straight into the Viking. I was about to say that. <laughs> And this is a difference from the first game. The first game yep. he went for those two barracks, uh, didn't exactly have a lot of counters for that Banshee that came in from Happy. Mm -hmm. So with his Viking out, he should be able to defend a little bit better than the last game. Yeah, he's just going to have to be very conservative, conservative with his scans. Make sure he uses them at the right time. We also have Blue Flame coming out here for Hyphen up as well. And a turret going down, this is very nice. He's going to be able to defend that mineral line nicely. Uh, once again, though, he does lose this forward supply depot. Not a huge hit, but something that you don't really want to have happen early in the game. He does take out one of the Marines here for Happy and the Viking's going to come in. It does cloak the Banshee. There's only one Marine to actually deal with this Viking here now. It does lose a lot of the Marines on the top of the ramp. The, the Hellions are now in. There's only that one Banshee. He needs to focus down those, those Hellions. One does go down. 
This is really nice having the Banshee and the Hellions. The Hellions can get a, a nice wave attack and then the Banshee can clean them up all in one hit. However, they are going to uh, divert their attention right now. The Banshee moving away only has 16 health left. As soon as can go down, it does die and that does clean up the fight. Uh, both units, both players losing a bit. I think Hyperdub came out, or Hi Happy came out slightly ahead in that fight. Uh, but another Cloak Banshee comes in right here, cancels that turret that was going down to try to finish off the wall and keeping those Hellions outside the base. Blue Flame about to finish for Hyperdub, so he will be able to clean up these Hellions and Marines quite easily. But that Cloak Banshee is still running around doing a lot of damage here. Yeah, I like the choice here by Happy, actually taking out a lot of the Marines first to keep that Banshee alive as long as possible. He also has a couple of Marines here to try and deal with this, this Viking as well. And Hyperdub does actually have enough for a scam, but he's trying to save it. Does lose the, the Regactor on the barracks and now backs up. I like how Happy is now just retreating. Yeah, that was really good for Happy. He did a little bit of damage. He took out the Supply Depots, which Supply capped Hyperdub for a little while, preventing mm -hmm. a lot of the reinforcements, preventing the army from building up, and then just backs off and goes for an expansion. Yep. And now making Hyperdub a little bit paranoid here. He has thrown down a bunker at the top of his ramp. Just doesn't feel safe moving his expansion down. As on the other hand, we do have Happy actually moving his command center down. He's getting an orbital command there as well, and he's just going to extend his lead here. His blue flame is done. His, his raven is now out as well. And it looks like we're going to see the same type of unit composition that we saw last time. Yeah, we do have uh, three factories going down here. One, he's just building on his hack lab. He is moving the other fact or his first factory over to the reactor, so he's going to get a lot of Hellions out like last game, uh, take a lot of the map control, but he is going to have a huge tank force as well, uh, which is going to be really good at, at pretty much fighting anything that Hyperdub is going to throw at him right now. Yeah, just noticing here, Happy does have control of all four sensor tap. Zelnaga Towers here, and he is actually going to spot this drop coming through on the right-hand side. This is the oh. only thing that really would have gotten Hyperdub back on even footing, but now he knows it's coming, sending his Hellions. Looks like he's going to send his Hellions over there. He's actually making a third command center as well. But here yep. we go. We do have two Banshees and a Viking coming across to try and intercept this. We do have Blue Flame Hellions, four of them in this dropship. And it is Blue Flame Hellions versus Blue Flame Hellions. So those four versus four are going to be an even fight. However, this Air Force from Happy is going to be able to uh, not make the battle even at all. <laughs> uh, so Hyperdub is going to try to get away with whatever he can, but I don't think he's going to get very, very far. And these Hellions are going to fall into space. Or not. Three of the Hellions dropping down. Two of them are going to get away. Uh, not the best drop. <laughs> well, he didn't really have any other choice. He had, he had that choice to stay in the air, lose to the Viking, or drop them and try and get a couple away from yep. those Banshees. So he did make the right decision. But he's still only just now moving towards his natural expansion. And looking here, the third for Happy is actually now going up. Yeah, the economic lead for Happy is really skyrocketing. He is throwing down a, a fourth factory. So he's going to have a huge mech, uh, mech army coming out here very, very soon. I believe once he gets that third going, he's going to push out with his force, either just completely choke off Hyperdub or go for the kill immediately. And I think you're right here. He's actually only four SCVs up in total, but he will have that extra orbital command very shortly, and that is a huge boost to that. Looking at the supply here, we're at 70 to 103. And just the constant pressure by Happy, just, like I was saying earlier, Hyperdub does not feel comfortable being on the defensive. Yeah, he's a very aggressive player normally, so this is not exactly what he's used to. Uh, he does have those Vikings there to be able to force away that Cloak Banshee, but the Cloak Banshee got the scouting he needed. He knows that Hyperdub's only on two bases. He just started saturating it. There's a lot of Blue Flame Hellions here, but they do get scouted. However, there's nothing here to defend against them. They are going to move in and take out a lot of the SCVs. Some of them are fighting against the Hellions of Hyperdub to be able to keep them distracted while all these SCVs do go down. Wow, this is a huge win for Happy in this battle. The Vikings are going to need to drop down to try to fight against these. They are going to clean them up, but not without taking significant, significant damage here. He did lose all those Hellions, but I cannot praise the decision-making enough to split up his Hellions there. Took two or three, took out all of those. We do have a Banshee now working on a supply depot, but he's going to be taken out very quickly by these three Vikings. Now, he has cloaked, but not really much he can do about that. And this supply depot is going to burn down if... Uh, Happy does not respond quickly enough. Uh, I think he just went, oh, I'll just go build some more. Yeah. He does have about a 50 supply lead, but I just want to go back to those Hellions splitting them up. He would not have gotten anywhere near as many SCVs if he'd only gotten one or the other. That is very true. He's, the, the real thing was he needed to kill before the Vikings dropped to the ground. Exactly. The Hellions could do almost nothing to those Vikings, so uh, by splitting it up, he kept the 
anti-Hellion force distracted while he could get the kills that he needed to on the SCVs. Yeah, it looked like Happy was actually going to move out here for a second, but he's decided to come back. He does have an insane lead at the moment. There is a lot of tanks there. The majority of Hyperdub's force here is Vikings and Banshees. And he's just setting up five missile turrets all around his base right now. He's going to just try to be very, very safe before he moves out. Uh, it's a really nice play because if you move out too soon, uh, a counterattack from the air can actually do a lot of crippling damage to you. Yeah. So he's also making a fourth command center, just going to extend his lead. Hype it up, still stuck on two bases. We're having a look at his vision here. He does see... No, he doesn't, sorry. He does not see that extra command center. We've got Thors coming out now as well to try and deal with those clumped up Vikings. Yeah, that's a really nice transition. He started getting a, a pretty decent air force in the beginning, but then he moves over to get those Thors uh, because Hyperdub's overreacting, getting a ton of Vikings out here, trying to get a few Banshees. But once he sees those Thors, he's really going to be screwed. Yeah, we do see Hyperdub being aggressive here. He wants to get the game back in the momentum that he wants it to. Just doesn't have anywhere near the army size that he wants. In here, there are 12 tanks in the mix here for Happy. Two Thors, eight and eight Vikings. He's just going to go for it. Losing a lot of Hellions here, pulling back, but all these thoughts, all these units going to work. We oh, got the nice point of Grand Strone as well as Scan going down to get rid of all these Banshees. As Four well. Banshees died at the same time. <laughs> wow, and that forces Hybrid up to GG. There's really not much you could do in that in battle. No, but I do like Cass's style coming from that game. He was constantly in his face, even though he was, he was just all over the place. Yeah. He was, he was yeah. keeping up his macro, he was being economical, and yet he was always, even with like two or three units, he was still at the door of Hype It Up, keeping his attention elsewhere. Yeah, I think that uh, early fight was really what set it off. Uh, Happy was able to get a lot of units into the base of Hype It Up early on. Do a bunch of that. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. So, I, I think we're going to see a lot more from Happy in the GSO. Yeah, uh, and obviously he's going to be in Code A. He did secure his seed for next season, if he doesn't get into Code S even, by getting up to the up and down matches. Yep. There are a lot of Protoss uh, on the other side of the bracket for him though as well. So we'll see his TVT obviously very, very good. Yep. We'll see how his other matchups stand up. Well, the style that he played TVT here actually transitions well to playing against some of the other races. The, the use of those Blue Flame Hellions we saw in some of the earlier matches of GSL this week, that uh, constant use of those Blue Flame Hellions can really tra change the pace of a game, especially against Zerg. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that his heavy play with uh, Hellions, Banshees, and, and then transitioning into Mech later yep. will actually serve him very, very well in the other matchups as well. Yep. Well, he does have that opportunity of being in the IM house with some yep. amazing players of each race. Uh, as we saw in the GSTL, he came out. He does have the confidence now. He's been on TV before. Yep. He didn't look nervous at all in that booth. He, he was quite happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least he's starting to get there. I, I think he's yep. still just mildly content. But mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the next matchup we're going to have coming up for you is going to be Startail Curious versus Slayer's Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. So we are going to have another mirror matchup for you. It's going to be ZVZ this time. We did see last night a very interesting ZVZ coming in from July in this tier. If anyone hasn't caught those, <laughs> check it out on the VODs. It definitely put me and Wolf going, what? Yeah, it was definitely a game that I haven't seen anything like that before. Just an entire screen filled with Infested Terrans from both players. Uh, tons of Tier 3 units in a ZVZ, something that you never really hear of in StarCraft no, 3. Not really. So it's really nice to see that the, the gameplay is evolving a lot in StarCraft 2. Uh, going to be interesting to see where we go from here. Yep. Um, not just trying to read here from the map. It is going to start off on Terminus Re. Mm. So a very interesting ZVZ map. Because the way the actual maps work here is they each get one veto yep. from the map pool. And then it's random maps. Yep. I, I understand. So you can get some weird matchups there. But I kind of like it that way. It forces people to play on all the maps, flesh out the metagame on each of them, and see how it develops. Yeah. And the other interesting thing is because Code A is so quick this season... Um, from the round of 32 to the round of 8 is only one week. Uh, it's trying to compress it, so we're, we're trying to evolve the GSL, so it is a lot easier for players to come out here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot less of a time commitment than it used to be. But because of that, it's a lot harder to prepare for the maps that you are actually going to be randomly thrown into. It does It does tend to favor the players who are well-rounded yep. rather than just specifically playing for one match. Some players do amazing at that. Uh, they just practice one matchup for a week, play amazingly, and then change it to the next matchup. That's but we are going to go into a five-minute break, and we'll be right back with Yu-Gi-Oh! vs. Curious.